Throughout the semester in anthropology of the built environment, we have analyzed the way in which people engage with space as well as the works of various theorists. As a final project, we selected a piece of the built environment on the Whittier College campus to evaluate how people engage with that space. My focus for this analysis is the Bonnie Bell Wardman Library, home to thousands of books and electronic subscriptions available to members of the Whittier College community. The library once existed in a small redwood building until the college began to expand in the 1930s. In need of more space, the library was relocated to Menden Hall, where it remained until the 1960s. Around this time, a generous college trustee named Aubrey Wardman recognized the need for a space dedicated to the continually growing library. In 1964, the Bonnie Bell Wardman Library was completed. Then, in the 1990s, it was clear that once again the library was in need of more space to house its growing collection. The new library facility was built on the original site of the Bonnie Bell Wardman Library, but doubled its size. In its current state, the library rests on Founders Hill, which is centrally located in the lower part of campus. Priority service in the library is provided to the students, faculty, and staff of Whittier College. Members of the Whittier community are welcome to use the library, but they are limited to four stand-up PC computers by the main floor entrance, and printing is unavailable to them. The physical space of the library is divided into three floors, each with an individual atmosphere that corresponds with patterns of social behavior. The first floor, being the utility floor, experiences the most foot traffic with students and faculty flowing past the circulation desk throughout the day. Along with the buzzing atmosphere, the noise level on the first floor is generally accepted to be higher than the two upper floors. As students climb the stairs to the second floor, noise levels lower to accommodate more individual studying. As soon as students reach the third floor, it is understood and stated that limited noise must be made to avoid disrupting other students. For the most part, there seems to be an unspoken understanding of the way to conduct oneself when interacting with the library space. I figured it out on my own. No one's ever told me anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, students occasionally test the boundaries of this seemingly collective understanding. <laughs> when students disregard library culture, it can create discomfort among other library users. One student mentioned that she uses the upper floors of the library because they are supposed to be quiet. Therefore, when an individual or group of people are loud and disturb her, she will give them what she called the death stare. If it were common practice to communicate in the library as one would in the CI or another socially active environment, this violation would not cause any disturbances. Therefore, the cultural norms of behavior within the library's built environment are evident through the distress some students experience due to their violation. Overall, library behavior appears to be the result of an interactive relationship with the built environment, with the way the space was created influencing the way we engage with that space.